Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Reverend Beverly Stratt. I'm the spiritual director here at this absolutely magnificent place. Am I going in and out? Well, I don't think I actually need a mic. You guys know me. I'm loud, and I'm happy to be loud. Anyway, it's wonderful to be home. I missed you guys. <laughs> no, seriously. You know, being in California for the last couple of weeks was um, very interesting. It was beautiful. A cinema. You guys know about a cinema, this beautiful retreat center. And uh, got together with all my peeps from CSL, NVC, New Vision Center, where they drew me. We had a big gathering. There were more of us than anybody else there. So next time we go, we are all going together because we're going to outnumber them. <laughs> so it was really wonderful to be around the people. It was, uh, filled me up greatly. And um, the music, I got to tell you, Nafisa Monroe was part of the musical team. And it was like they were, that was just a titch of it. They were absolutely brilliant. You hear their music a lot here. And what is so nice is that uh, Karen Drucker and Gary Lynn Freud said to me, I will send you everything we have. <laughs> yes, everything. Do you know what that means for us? So I know for all of our musicians, they're going to go, we have all this great stuff coming. So it was a really wonderful occasion. Um, and I'm still getting my feet back on the ground. I did travel with Reverend Mark Johnson, so you know. <laughs> I flew into Portland, and his has a home up in Kalama, and I was there for a couple of days, beautiful. They look over the Columbia River. It's magnificent. It's peaceful. It's like, why am I going anywhere but staying here? This is the only place I need to be. But we got in a car, Reverend Mark Johnson and me. Mm-hmm. The first day we drove seven and a half hours. Do you know what that car must have looked like from the outside? Woo! The vibration. I don't think we touched ground anywhere along the way. We warned Redding. We stopped in Redding. We warned them we were coming. They were cleared the path. And then we drove the following five hours the next day. But we did that on the way back too. Filled up. It was hazy. But it was absolutely wonderful. And he sends his love. He will be here soon in September. He will be speaking. He will be doing his play shop and everything. So we look forward to having him back. So that was a cinema. Yes. Can I go back right now? Anybody want to go with me? Let's just go. Let's just check out over here. We'll get a big boat. We'll get a big boat. We'll just sail over. So I have, before I move into uh, the rest of Today, I have a little quote from Mother Teresa, and you, as I move through the talk, you'll understand this one even better. Thank goodness it's humorous. She said, I know God will not give me anything I cannot handle. Sometimes I wish God didn't have such a high opinion of me. <laughs> yes, sometimes we feel that way, you know, so... It has come, I feel like there are many, many Sundays that I come and I stand up here and the first thing I say to you is that today I have to share some sad or unpleasant news. Well, today I'm not going to share anything new other than what we already know, but I will be speaking a little to our grief and our loss. The Maui fires have been devastating, something that we haven't probably experienced this much loss of life on the island. I, I don't even know. I don't even have a timeline on it. And it truly, we are all one. And so we walk this path together. I know that many of you have friends that lived in there. Many of you live in Lahaina and the surrounding area. And so we constantly feel the loss. This is our sister island. We are called to it. We can feel at the very depths of our soul what everybody is going through. And we don't want to deny it at all. You know, we will go through these emotions. Sometimes it feels like a big roller coaster coming at you in all different directions. 
you know, I think it's almost like a theme park because everybody else is having their own ride. And you know, we get off at different times and nothing in a theme park is ever in sync. And so you can just feel completely discombobulated and void sometimes. What is there? What is there to do? Wha what is all of this going on? And we need to just be able to walk through it in community. For when we come together and gather, we can share our feelings, we can share our emotions, and know that in the big picture we are still all one and we will walk through this together. That's one thing I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that we will walk through this together. Will it look pretty? Are we going to be smiling the whole time? Probably not. But within it, we will still be celebrating life because that is what we're called to do. And one of the things that came, I spoke with Adam. You all remember our wonderful Adam? I checked in with him. I wanted to see what was going on, how they were doing over there. And you know, Adam works for a public service TV station, right? So he was telling me all about this, the stuff that was going on and the everything that was happening and the finding of this and the revealing of this and all of the, the news. And within there, I started to hear this incredible gem. There was something that I could feel that was coming up. And what I realized was, is as he was telling me about the devastation, he was also telling me about the human care that was coming forward. He was showing me the stories of compassion and love and the coming together of everybody. And that we put aside our differences and we come together as one in the true knowingness of this. So as he was speaking, one of, his, one of their um, goals is to find these stories. And he's telling me he didn't have to look. They were everywhere, everywhere. So therein lies a beautiful hope for us, a knowingness for us, that in this horrific situation, we are finding the best of humanity. We are finding the best of humanity. It's sad sometimes that we have to think that it takes this, or like the, the bombing of the trade centers, to bring us all together, to put our differences aside. But it is happening. And it's not just the island chain that is coming together. I've been getting messages from all over the world, reaching out because we are online as one of the communities, the CSL communities. So we are getting messages from CSL people all over the world saying, what can we do? What can we do? How can we do this? How can we donate? Know you're in our prayers. I mean, the cinema was crazy. I mean, I didn't find out about it until somebody walked up to me and went, I'm so sorry. I'm like, because when I took off from uh, the Friday, when I took off from Hilo, we, w we had to stay on the runway for a while because there was a brush fire outside of the airport on Maui. And so they were, direct, they were diverting planes to Honolulu. So I had, we had to wait, and then of course we were delayed in Honolulu as well. So I'm thinking, it was a brush fire when they walked up to me, a brush fire. And then I went and found the news. The, through a cinema, the power of prayer, the power of love was powerful. People were coming together, they were surrounding Reverend Mark and myself, Reverend Angelica Jane was there, um, the whole West Hawaii CSL, there was a big contingent from there. So it was absolutely inspiring and uplifting to know how well we are held, not just us as a community, but everybody and the whole of the, the situation in Maui. So we, we stand there. We stand in that knowingness. And of course, we always want to ask the question, why? Why the hell did this happen? We can look at the situations that were so unique that came together to create this. I mean, honestly, if Dora had moved one mile in the right direction, we would have had water. We would have had rain. But no, Dora was just far enough south 
not to be able to give us the water, but to give us the wind. The dryness in our, all of the, and I can go on. I sat with Reverend Mark, and we went through all of the little details that were unique in that moment that came together to create this, and we go, why? Why is this happening? Why did it have to happen? The one thing I want to tell you right up front, it was not a punishment from God. Just to let you know, it was not a punishment from God, not our God, not the God that we believe in, not the God that is the creator, not the God that is the God of love. So if anybody wants to feel like we're being punished for being who we are as human beings, that is not the truth in this establishment, just so that you know. Our God is not a man in the sky that is sending down bolts of lightning and to punish us, there's no brimstone. This is not the way we look at it. Not at all. It's a consequence for action. Absolutely. There's always consequence for action. You know, there are things that... Um, so when we look for these answers, you know, we want to still know why. And so we look back to nature. We look back to nature to see how nature works. Nature's constantly pulling itself back to balance. This, uh, these are the laws that we believe. These are the laws that we teach here. We teach this, that nature will continue to evolve. There's always destruction and creation. And this movement is continual. It's going to happen. How it happens, the uniqueness of it, where it is, therein lies why we can't wrap our heads around it because it was beautiful, it was respected, it was old, it was tradition. There were people, there still are people we're finding lives that have been lost tremendously. So just to say, okay, well, it's nature getting itself in balance sounds really, really, really yucky. But it is also the truth of the matter that nature will do this. Dr. Ernest Holmes always said that, let me read it because the brain has to kick in still. It's still, it's still somewhere in an airplane. He said, um, he said that in nature, it won't let us hang around too long. I have to find where I am. Yeah, okay, yes. Nature will not let us stay in any one place for too long period. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding advancement of the soul. There is a wise provision, for should we stay there too long, we will become too set, too rigid, and too inflexible. So he speaks to us that nature's not going to let us stay around. Well, it's not going to let anything stay around. Everything. We literally live on an island of destruction and creation. We see it in action every single day. But what we've also come to know is that we are in a period of time that is moving to a new paradigm, a new paradigm. And this paradigm that they've called it is a paradigm of holism, which in effect, that what comes into that paradigm of holism is so much of what we desire, so much of how we want to see our lives walk out in the world, the compassion of humanity, the moving back to the compassion of the land, using the land well, being in so many different ways, everything that we are asking for is coming forward in this new paradigm. The hard part is, is that in order for something new to come forward, some of the old has to be removed. I mean, we can just see it as we would remodel a home. You know, we go in and we want to let go of what no longer serves us in our home. And what do we have to do? We have to get it out. We have to remove it. We have to get it put away in order to allow the new to come in. And what we hope that we do with our own homes is allow in the new that's going to serve the life that we want to live and to support it how we want to walk it out in a new way, a healthier way, a way that is, is, uh, encompasses this feeling of an earth that is moving in the direction that we are asking for. 
Unfortunately, it happens as well like Lahaina. Lahaina happened, there's nothing about Lahaina that needed to go away. But we hope and pray that where there has been a space made available, that what comes forward is in alignment with the new way of life that we want to live, where we live in community, we live greater peace, we live greater interconnectedness, we live greater compassion and understanding for each other and the land around us. So that's what we can do. That's how we can do. That's what we can pray for. For we know the cycle of destruction and creation will happen no matter what we choose or where we choose for it to be. It's going to happen. Nature will do this. The laws of the universe will do this. And that is the God that we honor in this place and in this space. It is a God of love, and yet it's a God of creation. It creates in love, and naturally in nature, destruction happens before the new can come forward. I'm not saying that we're not mourning. I'm not saying that it's not devastating, not at all. But I do want to come to you from a point of view of the teaching that we bring forward. And we will walk this out. I do have a plan. Anybody question that? I do have a plan. We all have a plan. And the plan is the plan for me personally, and I hope that you will all get on board as a community, is to do what um, Mayor Mitch asked for, is to stay in place right now, allow for what is going on for all the emergency services to come in and do their job with this least amount of chaos as possible in Maui. And while we are waiting, we can gather goods, clothing, and everything, and I will find a space on this property to save this stuff. We can also donate money. We know where it can go, and we can get ourselves ready. And when the time is right and we know what we can do, we can step in and do it because this ain't a sprint. I know you heard Rabbi Rachel say this, Mayor Mitch has said it, and I'm saying it to you because we've seen it before. We watched it in many of the many other natural disasters. It takes years. And I know, and I claim this for you as my community, that we are in it for the long haul. We're going to go in where there's a time and a place and an understanding of how we can be the most effective, and we will continue, and we will continue, and we will continue so that we can bring a healing back to our island. Are we on board? We're okay with that plan? Thank you, thank you. So here's the thing, in complete honesty with all of you, this is my first kind of disaster like I'm dealing with in the position I'm in. Do I know what to do? I have no freaking clue. <laughs> None. None whatsoever. But I do know that there are many people in this community, in the greater community, and the greater community that do know what to do. So what I plan on doing for myself is to reach out, to find the contacts, to see where we go. Beloved Sandy has worked through this before. Her and I are going to work together. So what I'm going to do is make sure that we align ourselves with the people that can guide us to be the best advantage to the situation as we possibly can. So that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to walk out these next steps over the next couple of weeks is to find out, to open myself, to align myself with those that are doing it and can guide and know what they're doing in a time like this. You know why I feel so passionate about it? Because you know what the topic is for this week. It's finding your passion. So what I just said about aligning with the people that know, that can guide us to how we can do our best work, that's the same way as we found our passion. 
It's the same way of doing it. We don't know. Most of us don't know what our passion is. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six. And Thursdays, conversations in consciousness, it came up. And I told them all. They've given me, I can say whatever I want. It's, it's, a, it's a nice, closed, confidential group. And they went, yeah, go with it, whatever. Build your talk. So in that group, we were talking about what is your passion? And a lot of us have no idea because we think passion should be big and bold and red and affect everybody and really, well, no, no, no. Not all passions look the same. Passions can be quiet. Passions can be unassuming. In fact, there were some passions that came up were like, eh, this can't possibly be my passion. It doesn't do anything. Yes, it does. It serves you as you serve humanity in your own specific little way. And I say little because we're little. We can ask we're little. But little's a lot. Have you ever seen a little snowflake? It's about this big. Have you ever seen an avalanche? Yeah. So you might be think you're little, but you put yourself together with other people. We've got an avalanche going over here. So our passion, we want to look for our passion to see what it is, to go in and find out how we want to do this. And the most important thing we need to do is nothing at all. Don't send people out. The most important thing we need to do is nothing at all except align ourselves with the divine. Because if you don't know what your passion is, even though it's already in you, blueprinted in, you came in, created, fully formed, boom, it's in there. But, you know, we have so much stuff all over us. Do you like the way I use the word stuff and not shit? We have all this stuff all <laughs> over us that we can't even find that beautiful base cause that is what is ours to do on this planet. Because we're like, oh, I'm not good enough. Yeah, yeah. That's all going out of the window. Because when we align ourselves with the divine, we are allowing the divine to reveal to us what it put in us in the first place. We don't have to guess. We don't have to guess. And yes, it changes. It'll go from one time, I was an adamant, I was a dancer. I was going to be a dancer. And yes, I was. Well, then I got old. Well, I'm not going to dance anymore. What's next? What's my next passion? Yeah, I wrote thousands, well, no, not thousands, hundreds, no, 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 tens of business plans of things I can do. Sure. Yeah, they suck. I'm like, no, no, that, uh, hey, I need fire behind me. But it's not the fire for the rest of the world to see. It's the fire to ignite me. What lights me up? What lights you up? Go in and find that. You know, we have people that love sharing their love. How do they share it? So many different ways that we care for people. We don't have to do a thing. And as Joan quoted last week, all we have to do is be you. All you have to do is show up as you. So I don't want to hear anybody go, well, you know, I, I love doing this, but it's not such a good thing. I mean, we had a passion come up for cooking. We had a passion come up for shopping. Do you notice in both those things, they don't seem very big, but they nurture other people. They have a passion for throwing love. It's nurturing other people. There's no greater calling in this life, in this earth, than to be called to nurture and be with other people, to lift them up, to raise them up. And how do we find our way? Because we can discredit all of those things around us. We just align ourselves with the divine, just as I'm going to align myself with the right knowledgeable people in town. We align ourselves, and as we do that, we will see what is revealed, what is ours to do. Just as we will re be revealed through our own task, where will our talents be the most useful? Where will our energy be the most useful? When you align yourself with the divine, your passion is going to show up beautifully. It may not be loud, it may not be red. It can be quiet. It can be calm. 
but it moves with an energy that what can inspire you and everybody around you. This is how we show up to be the change that we want to see in the world by being that already. When I spoke about Nafisa Monroe earlier on, I don't know that this is the truth, but this was my imagination around her, that she's been an actress, she's been um, a writer, she's been doing all of those things. And when she surrendered to being aligned with the divine, she found her passion, her purpose in her spoken word, in the writing of her spoken word. So Dr. Ernest Holmes says this about our passion and our purpose. He says, life will be to you what you are to it. Somehow, you must link your will, which means your desire, your will, your thought, your intellect, your imagination, and your feeling with the divine presence, which is already here. I'm going to read it one more time. Life will be to you what you are to it. Somehow, you must link your will, your thought, your intellect, your imagination, and your feeling with the divine presence, which is already there inside of you. That is what I've seen when I see somebody shine, when I see somebody light up with doing just from day to day, with just being them. It is passion in its best and most beautiful form. So that's the invitation to each and every one of you, is not to say or to look and go, this can't be my passion. If your passion lights you up, whatever it is, and if in turn it gives to the world and the community around you, you are so on target. You are so on target. Dive deeper into it, bring more forward, and let your light truly, truly shine. So I'm going to close with just one little piece more from our beloved Nafisa Monroe. She writes, if your life were a piece of music, what song would it play? If your life were a dance, would it be tap or ballet? If your life were a painting, what style and colors would appear? If your life were a poem, what would others think about you? Thank you. So it is. All right. Let us take it to prayer. So we breathe in right here, right now, into this magnificent moment, into this wondrous time where we see the highs and the lows, we feel the pain and the joy, we know the truth and we question. We lean into this time of knowing that there is devastation in creation moving through our very bodies as we speak, moving through our world around us, and knowing that as it changes and moves, it brings forth even a greater being right here, right now. For we allow that to be. We allow ourselves to come forward and be open to being and seeing a new way. And so I know for each one of us here today that as whatever was spoken is taken in and we walk through the week, we look with eyes just a little different. We see the beauty and passion in the smallest thing. We see the love and the caring in each human we meet. No matter what is going on, we can look through it and see the spirit and the God in it. For we can see that back of everything is still this magnificence. So here we walk, and we walk in kindness, we walk in grace, and I know that this is the truth of who we are, and I know that for us, what will be revealed is what we truly desire, for Spirit has said yes. Yes, my beloveds, yes. You've set your intentions, you've expressed your desires, and it is done, and done magnificently. So I release this prayer knowing that it is so, and I hope that you can claim it with me by faith. And so it is.